Okay, let us speak about uh, initiation, uh, what we uh, call in uh, Sanskrit Diksha. And in our previous uh, satsang uh, video, we spoke about Diksha or initiation in um, uh, Kriya Yoga tradition. And uh, uh, now just your, your question is about initiation and Sai Baba. And well, um, uh, we have... Um, like first Sai Baba, uh, who was Shirdi Sai Baba in uh, 19th century. Second Sai Baba is a Sati Sai Baba, who was mainly like 20th century. He passed away 2011, but anyway, mostly it's like 20th century. And we have a third Sai Baba, Prema Sai Baba, who is a, a divine child yet. Uh, it's like 21st century. And, you know, um, okay, um, we'll speak about initiation, but okay, anyway, a few words about Sai Baba anyway. Mm, uh, Sai Baba uh, keep on reincarnating. And um, huge question is, who is Sai Baba? And normally I am trying always to escape from this question and um, I'm immediately becoming very flexible because I don't want to force people to think about Sai Baba the way I think. Because sometimes, by the way, I, I'm sure who he is and sometimes I say I don't know, but it's just some absolute consciousness, some mm, huge divine incarnation, who am I to know about him? Because some people say, okay, Sai Baba is God. And some people say, no, no, he is not God, he is a cheater. But sometimes I wonder how it is possible to know that he is God. Okay, I mean, the people who say that he is a cheater, they are cheaters themselves. They are stupid idiots themselves. Because, you know, to speak about such a size as a cheater is, um, uh, means that that people are absolutely ignorant because he's so powerful it's a huge divine power that i mean you may believe that he is god or you may not believe that he is god but for sure he is divine master you know that's so obvious that i mean it's only totally ignorant people may speak about uh satya sai shirdi sai as the cheaters but is he gone or not? It's a subtle question because people ask for proof. And of course, there is no any proof because it's something which we may experience in our heart. And I think that, of course, devotees, they experience that he is divine incarnation in the sense that he is Lord God himself. Some people can't say this, but it's also okay. I mean... Even if some people speak about Sati Sai as the divine master, divine guru, divine philosopher, and that's also okay. I mean, why not? You know, the question is how much um, we are ready to digest. And if for somebody Sati Sai is a great saint, okay, why not actually? Yeah, better not to fight about it. And anyway, he is a very unusual personality. Uh, and uh, he is a so huge that um, he is beyond actually any particular tradition or even uh, particular religion. I mean to say when, okay, let us speak about such a sign. And I was fortunate enough to spend some 20 years in his ashram and... Um, Okay, if to be exact, like like for eight years I was his translator, interpreter, uh, and when Russian-speaking people, uh, um, like, if he, he invited, him, you know, we call it in English, like, interview, where, like a personal, private conversation or with a Satya Sai, and um, uh, for the interview time I was translating, it was 90s. I was not only the one... But I was lucky enough to to be his translator and interpreter, and uh, 
you know, um, yeah, he was born in a Hindu uh, family, I mean, Sati Sai, in a South Indian village of uh, food party. But we can't say that Sati Sai um, was uh, Hindu. He was beyond any religion. And it's always confusing and sometimes even painful for, for some Indian devotees because they wish to keep him as the part of Hindu religion. It's like when we spoke about Mahatar Babaji with you, um, some I think I believe last week, and um, you know, Mahatar Babaji, great immortal Mahatma of Himalayas, he is not Hindu, he is not even Indian, he is beyond all that. But for some, and for most of the Hindu gurus, even, it's really painful, and they like to keep Mahadar Babaji as the part of Hindu tradition. The same happened with uh, uh, Satya Sai, because many Indian devotees, they wish to, to keep him as the Hindu uh, avatar, but he is not. He was born in a Hindu family, that's fact. But he is beyond all that, including Hindu religion. It's like... You know, the tricky question, may we say that Krishna was Hindu? May we say that, um, okay, Jesus the Christ was Jewish or Christian? Of course, Ju Jesus the Christ was born in a Jewish family, but was he Jewish? Was he um, Christian e even? You know, it's a tricky question, you know, philosophical question. And the funny thing is like, okay, can we call Buddha as Buddhist? Yeah huge question and um, let us uh, come back to the Satya Sai and initiation tradition um, you know Satya Sai told us so many times very strange message she okay, even uh, to me personally like okay I'm not guru and I'm not giving initiation wow what is the meaning of that the meaning is that yeah he is not guru because he is beyond all traditions and all that initiation stuff. And uh, what does it mean to be devotee of Satya Sai? Yeah, it's another really, really not easy question. Because um, to be his uh, devotee, yeah, it means that uh, to relate with him from heart to heart. To worship him in a very subtle way. I hope not in a stupid way, but at the same time, if you're really Sai Devotee, you can easily learn meditation and yoga and any kind of spiritual techniques from any other source as well, because Sai Sai is outside of that, beyond all of that, and he is, he is blessing. That's the reason why Christians, Muslims, Kabbalah practitioners, Tai Chi practitioners, Buddhist practitioners, they visited him. You know, Satya Sai personally blessed me to practice meditation of Kriya Yoga and Christian prayers and <coughs> even Tai Chi Chuan, Taoist, Tai Chi, Qigong traditions. Because why he was not a guru? Because he was beyond all that. And, uh, you know, Shirdi Sai and Satya Sai, and I don't know, I believe Prama Sai will say the same, that why it was no initiation in Sai Baba tradition because initiation means a certain school, certain tradition, certain approach and Sai Baba he is beyond that. That's the reason why in the tradition of Satya Sai was no initiation, at least formal initiation and he himself told us so many times that I don't have disciples, I have devotees but I don't have disciples it's a very subtle message because because you know to be disciple it means to follow certain certain uh, parampara certain guru tradition certain bunch of techniques or mantras but that was not about Sati Sai and I believe that his mm, main mission was about grace grace and love and blessings and then if you wish particular set of techniques okay go to the you know any workshop seminar or next door ashram and learn 
techniques from different sources. That, you know, Sati Sai blessed me to go to my guru, Yogi Rama, from whom I received all that wonderful Kriya Yoga meditation techniques and Bijamanda and Bijamanda tradition. That's particular, okay, tools how to practice meditation. But Sati Sai is just, uh, uh, just source of grace. That's, that's about uh, Satisai and um, initiation tradition.